When the incident like the one of Nyabugando unfortunately occurs, they come up, security in Uganda has collapsed, ETC. Now, what is the plan of these wonderful people? Is it to shift Uganda from the Great Lakes and put it where? Because you hear we have eliminated ADF from Uganda. They can no longer operate in the, in the rural areas. They don't control territory. They are in Congo. But from Congo, they can no longer infiltrate groups. They can no longer even easily infiltrate individuals. But we are still here. We have not shifted Uganda to take it to, I don't know where I would put it, which is safe. Middle East, <laughs> France, what, all those places have their problems. So f for us, we are here in Uganda and in the Great Lakes. So therefore, although we, 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 we defeated ADF, ADF was still in the neighborhood. And in the, the, the neighborhood, we can't shift to Uganda from here and put it where. So we had to, to struggle. We could not shift to Uganda, and instead we fortified here by having a strong army and intelligence service. The question is, how do you ensure total security in the continent of Africa where colonialism ensured excessive political balkanization? Because that is the challenge. You stabilize within Uganda, like for instance Karamoja, we have the same problem. You stabilize within, within Karamoja, but the guns remain in Turkana, in Kenya. And some other guns remain with, with Topotha, in South Sudan. And some other guns remain with uh, Pokot, in Kenya. So, what do you do? You, you must see how to handle that situation. Uh, and, uh, and I will tell you how we have been handling all these situations. And this is all because of the political balkanization, the, the fragmenting of Africa into these uh, small states. Because a country like the United States, you have got one political authority, one management, from New York up to California. That is, you, you, you take four hours by plane to go from New York to California. It, it is like from here to Johannesburg, to, to, to Pretoria. All that land and people are, are under one political authority. So if, if, there, if there is security to be handled, it is handled by one authority. But here, from here, 20 kilometers from here, another political authority. <laughs> so you have got so many authorities. So if, when you defeat the terrorists here, they go to shift to where you don't have authority to act. And that's what you, the young people, should be talking about. That's what we were, we were dealing with when we were growing up. The integration of Africa. But now, operating where we are now, where the, the political landscape is fragmented, uh, what do we do? If you have the right ideological, ideological orientation, you do what the NRM has done in Uganda by ensuring the following. Number one, a strong army that can fight any type of war. Yeah. I can assure you 
anybody who brings any type of war here we shall defeat him whoever he is whoever he is big or small we shall defeat him so number one that's medicine number one for all this uh -huh. number two a strong intelligence service that uses both human and technical means to detect and locate the enemies within the borders of Uganda and in some cases outside Uganda. So that is the second medicine. The third one, maximum political co cohesion within the country based on the broad best legitimate interests of the people. Uh, to have as many people united as possible. And in Uganda, people are really united. There, there are a few traitors who are always going to the embassies. To, we know them. We are following them. Uh, they, are, they are also supporting the economy of Uganda by drinking coffee in the embassies. So... Because they really, they really go there and the, the, the embassies have budget to, 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 to feed these uh, uh, wonderful people. But we follow them who try to encourage this. But the majority of the people are together. So that broad-based cohesion. Then number four. This is where now uh, the Vazukuru you could come in. Pan-African efforts to work with sister African countries on matters of common interest such as trade, ETC, including security. So therefore, the medicine of the NRM to, to, to peace is number one, a strong army. Number two, a strong intelligence service. Human and technical. Number three, maximum possible political cohesion. I'm saying maximum possible. If there are those who don't want to, to be with us, ah, we forget about them. Uniting as many, as many people as possible. And then, number four, the Pan-African Corporation. Yeah. Pan -African Corporation. Because these people are not in Uganda. They are somewhere else. So, you try to work with the government of those countries to handle the issue. This is how the NRM has turned Uganda into an island of peace in the region where Uganda is not generating refugees and is instead receiving the highest number of refugees in Africa and number three in the whole world. We are number one in the number of refugees in Africa and number three in the whole world in Africa we have gold gold for gold medal for refugees in the whole world we've got bronze for refugees mm -hmm. and uganda does not have refugees outside they are not uganda by 1986 uganda was number four in the whole world in the export of refugees. We are competing with Afghanistan, with, uh, I think, Ethiopia, and Sudan, who are number four. But now, we don't have any political refugee outside. All our people who were outside, many of them as refugees, became diaspora. They no longer refugees diaspora because they can come back anytime they want. They, 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 they are staying there voluntarily. 
They, they, are, they are not staying there because they are not forced. So Uganda, instead of becoming an export, uh, a, a refugee generating country, is now a refugee receiving country. And why? Because of the measures I've, 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 I've put here. A strong army, a strong intelligence service, maximum possible political cohesion, but also pan-African efforts. By relying on a strong army, a reasonably strong intelligence service, and maximum political cohesion possible, the NLM has been able to keep the ADF away from Uganda ever since they had defeat in Semlik Valley in 2007. However, the ADF were there in Congo, although their growth is not dramatic. They don't grow. ADF doesn't grow. They can't grow. Yeah. Because uh, uh, groups which could grow like uh, Fronasa, when we were fighting Idi Amin, <laughs> ADF does not grow. However, the ADF were there in Congo, although their growth is not dramatic, but the Congo government of His Excellency Kabira, supported by some regional and international actors, gave them free tenancy in North Kivu and Ituri. They were mining gold, selling timber, harvesting people's cocoa, collecting taxes, extorting money from people, etc., etc. They were modestly growing and with money. They also developed linkages with other terrorists like Al-Qaeda. However, all this does not mean much for the NRM, UPDF. We'll always defeat any anti-Ugandan terrorist group within the right condition, given the right conditions. In spite of the modest growth and free territory the Kabila government gave them, they could not enter Uganda in force. What I've already said, they could not enter Uganda in force by section, by platoon, by company, at all. They could not enter Uganda in groups at all. And could infiltrate individuals with a lot of difficulty. Like the ones who, 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 who killed uh, General Katumba's uh, daughter, those came as individuals. And uh, that's how they managed to, to, to come. Now, given this, should we and can we close the border with Congo, like the Israelis built a wall between Israel and Palestine, because you know the Israelis built a wall. They built a wall between Israel and Lebanon. I was watching on the news, there was something, some, something on the wall yesterday, on that wall, between Lebanon and Israel. And then they built a wall between Palestine, West Bank, and, and Israel. Should we, and can we, close the border with Congo like the Israelis built a wall between Israel and Palestine? Who would lose most, apart from the issue of the cost of the war, for the war? Uganda earns US dollars 606 million per year by exporting it to Congo. All this would be lost. Besides, we would harm and annoy our people and the Congolese people that live on the borders. These are the same people, Bakonjo Banande, Banyoro, Batoro, Batuku, Bahema, Banyamboga, Arurs, Lugubara, Lendu, Kakwa. That's why I always ask Anita whether she's Ugandan or Congolese. You, you should ask Anita. 
she, she, she will tell you the story. Mm -hmm. The Kinyarwanda speakers, the ones of Kisoro and the ones of Rushuru, ETC. Recently at Chankwanzi, I met a delegation of Congolese members of parliament to solve the problem of translation since I did not have a, a French speaker on my side. I spoke in Runyoro Toro and the Honorable Tobasima Atenyi, MP for one of the constituencies in Ituri, Congo, translated to the others. So I was speaking in Runyoro Toro and Tobasima was translating it to, <laughs> to, 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 to the French speakers. There was also an MP from Mahagi, who is an Aru speaker, with whom I exchanged my, my little Aru, Nedi, Afoyo, Afoyo Bino, who, who, who were exchanging. With Dr. Mona, the MP from Mahagi, they continued blasting off in Luo. They forgot about us. They became Luo now. So we don't know what they were discussing, whether they wanted to kill us or what. But if they want to kill, I can understand that one. My, my rule has improved, Neko. When I hear Neko, mm, I, I know. So when you hear Onek, Neko, all those, that is killing you now. These are the people that would close off if we tried to physically seal the border. So the question of seeing the body is out. Seeing the border is out. How, how could people enter Uganda? Because I, I saw some people commenting about this incident of Nyabugando. How could these people enter Uganda? They entered only two kilometers. And ent ent entering two kilometers is really, you cannot uh, stop it because uh, 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 so many people are crossing that border and in so many places. These are people that we would close off if we tried to physically seal the border. Cut off the toe because it has been invaded by jigger. When a jigger goes into your foot, then you, you, you cut it off. That's not... Uh, Group. No, the NRM, the NRM patiently removes the jigger and preserves the toe. Therefore, closing the borders, building walls is out. The only ways are, number one, to crush the ADF, kuhura, like you thresh millet, when you, when you club the millet with a big, big club, it's called okura. Oktokora, oktokora is like if something fell in my, some, a leaf, fell in my, my, my tea here, I, I, I would oktokora, I would remove it. I don't know, I don't know what they call it in Uganda, to remove like remove something that has fallen in your tea. Kuraza, kuraza, in the hunting, you watch the animal, and you see where it has entered. That is kuraza. And kutoza, kutoza is to track. To track. Kutoza is to follow the track of, of an animal. Fortunately, with the coming of his ex secured to power, he was more cooperative. He allowed us, since the 31st of November 2021, to kuhura thresh the ADF. It had good results. <coughs> because the ADF had foolishly gathered in big camps, confident that they were invulnerable, and no force could reach them. Now, I don't know whether my people are here. So, I thank you, and I wish you good luck.